We should be teaching people how to think and not what to think. Let me repeat that again. We should be teaching people how to think and not what to think. That's what this topic will be about today. Let's get into it. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Many of you know this verse. Many of you use this verse, but a lot of you have a complete misunderstanding of what this verse really means. So this video is all about this particular verse. We're going to understand what it means when they say the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. First of all, let's talk about fear. We have to break this down. So we're going to give you a complete definition of what fear is. Fear, an unpleasant, often strong emotion caused by anticipation or awareness of danger. Let me repeat that again. This is the definition of fear. An unpleasant, often strong emotion caused by anticipation or awareness of danger. There's also another type of fear that I want to touch on that I've learned from one of my followers, observer of life, shout out to you, um, reverential fear. An overwhelming feeling of wonder or admiration showing mixed feelings. This is the definition for reverential fear. An overwhelming feeling of wonder or admiration showing mixed feelings. It's basically saying you can't quite understand what it is, but you are in awe of its power. Now, reverential fear is associated with sacredness and regular fear is unpleasantly caused by a perceived threat. So when it's sacred, one is just uh, unpleasantly caused by a perceived threat. Those are the definition of fear. So now we're going to get into the verse. We're going to talk about what the verse really means. And I'm going to give you some examples of other people's perception of the verse so you can better understand what it means from their perspective. Also, Um, the verse that we're going to talk about, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. This is Benjamin Franklin's quote. And I, I assume that this quote comes from this verse. He says, The beginning of wisdom is the knowledge of your own ignorance. Let me repeat that again. Benjamin Franklin said, the beginning of wisdom is the knowledge of your own ignorance. This is another quote from another pastor I read online that associates with the same verse. Um, Ignorance is the beginning of knowledge. Knowledge is the beginning of wisdom and wisdom is the awareness of ignorance. Let me repeat that again. Ignorance is the beginning of knowledge. Knowledge is the beginning of wisdom and wisdom is the awareness of ignorance. So now we're going to explain this verse. Hopefully you get a a deeper understanding just from hearing those two quotes. Um, First, we're going to break down the beginning of wisdom. We're going to use synonyms so we can replace them so you can better understanding. Synonyms for beginning are start, undergo, perform, the first part of an action or activity. This is the synonyms for begin. Start, undergo, perform the first part of a action or activity. And these are synonyms for wisdom. The quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. So we're going to use these synonyms and we're going to replace them in the same verse. And this is what it would actually say if we, re- if we replace these synonyms with begin and wisdom. The start of having good judgment is understanding the fear of of the Lord. Let me repeat that again. This is the this is broken down in simplest form. The start of having good judgment is understanding the fear of the Lord. So let me tell you what that means. When you obtain wisdom, the first step is always about the fear of the Lord. Many of you um are trying to obtain wisdom and from for me, my first step at obtaining wisdom was understanding that The first step is always the fear of the Lord because many people are scared to venture out and discover these many truths because the Bible have taught them it's a sin to obtain any other knowledge that's not in the Bible. So the first step is understanding the fear of the Lord. People are too scared to uh, understand what that fear really is. Um, Many people are scared and their fear of God is greater than their love for him. So many people are loving God only because they are scared, (laughs) not because he is God and they are in awe of his, you know, existence. They are just scared. So um, you have to understand that fear and love is is kind of it's a thin line between those two. But um, there is no fear in wisdom and there is no fear in love. The church promotes fear because any knowledge, any knowledge will ultimately separate religion from truth. 
and it will keep you from attending church. So any knowledge of wisdom will ultimately separate you from the church and probably you from attending them because you have absolute knowledge at your doorstep. Why would you have to leave? But anyways, let me read, let me go into it. Um, the church promotes fear because any knowledge will ultimately separate religion from truth and keep you from attending church. Fear keeps you involved. Fear puts money in their pockets and fear allows you to be fully submissive. They know the right amount of fear leaves little room for doubt. With the right amount of fear, anything is possible. Fear is powerful, a God in itself due to what has been produced from it. Fear alone can cause you to make rational decisions, sometimes good, most times bad. But either way, you're never you're never fully in control of your energy when you're in a fearsome state. Your thoughts become polluted by the fear of danger. How could you expect to understand God or anything through fear? How could you accept any knowledge by fear? The church controls the narrative and they know that fear grabs attention. It is the backbone of most religions because because fear puts money in their pockets and with fear comes power. And this is an example for all of those people who may believe they are the bride of Christ, as if, even if you're a single person or you are a group of individuals. This is an example that I want to get through your head. I've, I've used this example before, but I wanted to use it again because it's a very good example because a lot of people are classifying themselves as the bride of Christ. So this message should uh, get through to you. Um, So you are the bride of Christ. Let's say you are the bride of Christ. So this is where any particular person, single person, or a group or a religious set that believes they are the bride of Christ. Um, you're about to get married. And before your, before your wedding, you read a book that is supposed to teach you how to be a good wife or good people. That's for the people that believe it's a group, the bride of Christ is a group. Um, you're about to get married. Before your wedding, you read a book that is supposed to teach you how to become a good wife or good people. This book is also supposed to pre prepare you for the life that you are going to marry into. So the Bible is supposed to prepare you for the life that you're going to marry into. And the Bible is supposed to teach you how to be a good wife. And the message is simple in the Bible. Fear your husband. <laughs> in fact, the message is clear that you should only marry him out of fear, not love. All of your family members, sisters, brothers, aunts, cousins, father, grandfather are also telling you only marry him because they also fear what he may do to them if you refuse to give in. So this is what the Bible is teaching. Fear your husband. In fact, the message is clear that you should only marry him out of fear, not love. This is what the Bible teaches. And this is what many people teach, that you should only love God through fear, not just plain old love, but you need to fear him. And that type of fear is love. It's not. It's like they're saying God is all for domestic violence. <laughs> What people don't understand, you will never have free will in a situation like that. Most women who choose to stay with a man who abuses them only do so out of fear of what the man might do if they decide to leave or attempt to receive any knowledge that promotes their departure, such as domestic violence help. Or even if they call the police, they won't leave because of the fear that he might do what he might do if they find out that that's what they're trying to do. In all or most situations, women stay because of the fear of not having any other choice. And I put that in there because a lot of people only believe in God because they fear that they have no other choice. <laughs> that type of fear leaves you with no other choice. So we're, we're using examples of a woman who's living with a partner who beats them and they fear them greatly. But they still remain with them because they feel like they have no other choice. This is what some people are teaching. Just like a young woman being forced into a, a arranged marriage that she has no control of. It, this is what people are teaching. The same perception of stay with a man out of fear or stay with this man because you have no choice. In reality, that is so far from the truth. Your fear of God should never be greater than your love for him. 
We shouldn't have to use fear tactics as a way to get to God. Most people only believe in God because they're so scared. Their belief is solely based on that fear. And people actually believe we will usher in God's presence in God's presence by being scared. Let me repeat that again. Your fear of God should never be greater than your love for him. We shouldn't have to use fear tactics as a way to get to God. Most people only believe in God because they are so scared. Their belief is solely based on that fear. And people actually believe we will usher in God's presence by being scared. It is so far from the truth. In fact, it holds no truth whatsoever. To actually believe wisdom is God, to actually believe the wisdom of God is obtained through fear, not knowledge or experience is crazy. And the reason why I say that because wisdom is knowledge and experience. How can you gain knowledge and experience through fear? Fear won't allow you to make that step. So, to actually believe wisdom is obtained through fear, not knowledge or experience is crazy. They actually believe the beginning of wisdom is fear. No, it's not. The beginning of wisdom is knowledge of fear. That's what I want people to understand. The beginning of wisdom is not fear. That's not, that's not true. The beginning of wisdom is knowledge of that fear. The beginning of wisdom is realizing that the fear of God isn't wise. There is no fear in wisdom and there is no wisdom in fear. Wisdom isn't a fearful energy. We shouldn't have to lead people to God through fear. This, this, this paragraph is so, is so important. And I want to emphasize on this because I felt like this paragraph alone is so important. I'm going to read it. Wisdom isn't a fearful energy. We shouldn't have to lead people to God through fear, shame, hatred, or ignorance. We should not have to lead people to God through fear, shame, hatred, or ignorance. We should be leading people to God through wisdom. In better, in better terms, your experiences should lead people to God. Wisdom is based on your experiences, your knowledge, your perception. That alone could, could lead people to God. Why are you using fear? There are so many ways that we can lead people to God through wisdom, knowledge, perception, truth, faith, determination, patience, humility. These are so many ways that we can lead people to God. Let me repeat that again. Through wisdom, knowledge, perception, truth, faith, determination, patience, and humility. Fear isn't the only way. In fact, fear may possibly be the least way of leading people to God. Fear should not be the only way that you lead people to God. Understand that. God is so much more than fear. If you're preaching, teaching, fear is the only way to God. You truly don't understand him. But through wisdom, you understand that that isn't true and you understand why it isn't true. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of Lord. No, the beginning of wisdom is knowledge of the fear of the Lord. I promote awareness. I promote wisdom and be aware of his existence. Be aware of his knowledge and understand that something is happening behind closed doors. We have yet to experience God in his full nature, so we should not fear it. Fear doesn't leave room for understanding. Fear does not leave room for wisdom. When your heart and mind is consumed by fear, it leaves no room for truth. Open your hearts for God to show you who and what he really is and leave no room for doubt. God is greater than what we've been taught and wisdom allows you to see him entirely in his full presence. I want to leave this message with you at the end of this um, video. And this is something I've been um, speaking on. I'm going to use this quote a lot and I'm going to use it at the end of this video. And I hope you understand why I'm using it. The lighter you become, the higher you ascend. I'm going to repeat that again. The lighter you become, the higher you ascend. Light in spirit and light in flesh. The lighter you become in spirit. And the lighter you become in flesh, the higher you will ascend. I hope this message was clear enough for you guys. I will try to do another video soon. Thank you.